Good day. Uh, today we've got another um, gun book review. Uh, I picked this one up uh, at a gun show on the weekend actually. It's one that I've actually already got. I've got an, uh, an older copy from the 1930s I think it is. An old linen bound one but I saw this one pretty cheap at the gun show uh, so I thought I'd buy it because it was, it was uh, um, in a lot better condition than my other one as far as reading goes. Now this is actually called uh, The Gun and Its Development and it's written by W.W. W. Greenan. Now um, those of you who know a little bit about uh, British uh, firearms makers will recognise the name Greener. Uh, w.W. stands for William Wellington Greener. Now Greener was um, the second in a, a family of gun makers. His father uh, was also William Greener, so he's just, if you see W. Greener written anywhere, that's William Greener, who's his father. Um, he was a gun maker. Uh, he, I think they, they started up in Newcastle area uh, initially, uh, but then moved down to uh, Birmingham where the rest of the gun trade was. Um, now, I can't remember the exact, I think his father died like in the 1880s or something like that and, uh, and then William Wellington Greener took over. Um, then there's a really quite an interesting, if you're into history, there's an interesting section in the centre where they talk about all these field trials in the, I think, 1870s and 80s. Um, and there was, there was, gun technology was, was, was advancing so quickly um, at that time that there was a lot of people who were kind of very old fashioned and William Greener, this guy's father when he was still alive, he hated the whole thought of, of breech loading firearms, he said they were dangerous and they were never going to take on and he refused, you know, he didn't, he, he didn't want his company to have anything to do with making them. Um, and there was this Field magazine which was the big magazine that all the, all the sportsmen used to read in the UK. And there was letters to the editor about this, that, and you know, the breech loader and the muzzle loader is better than the breech loader, and vice versa, and all this. Um, and then they had a so they had a set of field trials where the gun makers could actually um, submit their muzzle loaders and breech loaders and look at you know various parameters, how well they shot, how far they shot, etc., etc. So there's a whole lot of detail about that in here. Then a little bit later, the same thing happened as far as uh, now. There's a bit of controversy, but W. W. Greener claimed to have invented chokes in shotguns. There's some controversy saying that someone else might have done it before him, but anyway, again, there was, uh, there was, and there was a lot of court cases too about various things that people were claiming. Uh, they had another set of field trials with choked board guns compared to non-choked board guns. Um, and then there was another set of field trials with uh, different gauges of guns, you know, small, smaller bore compared to larger bore, and etc. So that's really interesting to read the whole ins and outs of that. Remembering that the last, William Wellington Greener's last edition of this that he wrote, even though this is the ninth edition, um, which has got more photos and stuff, um, but it was 1910, he died in 1924, so 1910, so when we're talking modern handling, we're talking from a 1910 perspective. Um, I think there were, I meant to. I forgot to mention the original, the original version of this book. I think was written in about 18. Most of the information of this book comes from that time, and then he obviously rewrote it a couple of times. And 1910 is the latest. But there's a lot of information about late 1800s firearms in here. So this is the latest, latest uh, version, but you'll see it with different, different covers uh, on it. Uh, and apparently the latest, as it says, ninth edition rewritten and with many additional illustrations. So um, um, there's a forward by Graham Greener, which is W. W. Greener's um, great great grandson, who um, who still runs the, well, the company. If you read about this, the company went right through until the 1960s, I think it was. Uh, then as it became less economical it was actually the name was sold and the company was closed down uh, but then in 1985 the Greener family reacquired an interest in 
the council have re-bought the company name and opened it up again and they continue to manufacture the famous Greener GP uh, making the very best side lock and DH-75 action guns and accessories um, so yes yeah, so there's an introduction from GT Teasdale Buck's book Expert Song so they're talking about W.W. Greener himself that's him there um, so here we go so here's the here's the um, chapters I'll just flip through this because we'll go through the chapters one by one so yeah we got as I said a lot of these books will have similar sort of things about early arms you know um, and all that stuff um, Invention of gunpowder by the Chinese, then early artillery in the medieval medieval periods. Um, and then early handguns. So it goes through the history of those with examples. Lots of illustrations in this, like these old fashioned, you know, um, what are they called? Plate engraving plate, I think they're called that they used to have in the 1800s. Um, there's lots of them, so they're actually, they're actually, it's actually quite, quite nicely, even though they're not colour photos or anything, there's a lot of detail in illustrations. Um, so, um, and then, okay, so then we get to the percussion system, so of course it talks about uh, early, um, you know chemistry and then of course the Reverend Forsyth if you know about anything about the Reverend Forsyth he actually invented the use of fulminate of mercury to make a percussion so he didn't actually invent the caps themselves but he invented the system which was then modified you know to produce the percussion cap so then we go to modern shotguns um, so um, yes yeah, so they talk about percussion guns modern sporting breech loaders um, so some of the so then of course there was a progression of those from the Lofa show um, you know with the rotating thing underneath um, through all the different types of actions of course there's always some greener ones there's an early greener one um, and um, Needham's center, center fire and then of course door was the inventor of what we consider the modern shotgun cartridge and he made guns as well um, so um, top lever gun with back action locks um, I've actually got a um, got an 1871 hammer gun which was, it was back action locks was very similar to that I'll, I'll, I'll post the I've never done a video on that one I should do it. it's got a broken hammer at the moment I've been madly trying to find a hammer for it but uh, um, treble grip so then we got Greener's patent self-acting striker guns um, so um, and then we've got um, various types doll's head very all the different types of locking triple grip gun so then we got the greeners treble wedge fast so they're all these they're all these names are patented treble wedge fast if you look at my other videos I've actually got a video on a um, Claiborne and Johnson gun which I bought and fixed up which I think because Claiborne and Johnson didn't actually make guns they were actually marketers of guns even they had names them I think it was probably made by greener and it's very basically the same as this. Um, treble wedge fast. What that means is you've got you got your two locking locking uh, lumps at the bottom. So each one has a has a thing that goes into it and locks it. And then you've got the little bolt which at the top which comes out and then locks into that hole in the top in the top extension. And that's called a Greener cross bolt because it was designed by W W, w Greener. So um, so they talk about just things, stuff like that. Um, so then, of course, you you know, in the late 1800s, very late, sort of, then they start getting the hammer, hammerless guns. So there's all the different versions of those. Um, 
then you've got your Anson and Dealey box lock, which is the initial, that's what most, the general kind of design of most box lock guns now are based on that. So it talks about that. Um, and then, yeah, barrel cocking, different cocking mechanisms. So, yeah, just if you're interested in shotguns in general, ejectors, all about the different the revolution of the injector. Uh, and then they talk about gun making and again it goes back to very early stuff and then um, and of course he's an expert on that and then modern methods of making guns so um, tells you sort of basically how the Damascus barrels were made um, in great detail filing and making locks as you can see, it's very comprehensive. Uh, and then there's a whole section on proofing. Proof of guns. Um, which is fairly interesting. It's, you know, especially with uh, British guns, it gives all the proofs. And then there's a, there's a thing here on foreign, foreign proofs, foreign proof marks. Uh, I've actually got another book. Well, I'm gonna, my next, next book video is going to be on proofing. So um, stay tuned for that. Uh, and then they're talking about test instruments, um, you know, testing guns. Okay, and then there's was saying about all this public gun trials, uh, choke bores versus cylinders, um, large versus small bore. And this is all the results from the trials. Shooting capabilities of shotguns, variety of shotguns and their shooting powers. Talks about buckshot and so any sort of, especially with shotguns, anything you're interested in, it will be in here. Um, so some really big, like duck guns, like four bore, big, big kind of ones, punt guns. Uh, the choice of a gun. So there's just sort of like at that time you know how to how to how to choose a gun um, how to use a gun trap shooting and there's a lot of stuff you know they have they used to have this live pigeon shooting that's what trap shooting was back in those days they used to let live pigeons go uh, and there was all sorts of rules and you know like it was sort of a rich man's sport so there's a lot of rules and a lot of you know sort of uh, unwritten rules as well I think gun club rules you know you have to do the right thing um, here's a picture of one of these things where they have the trap they're called traps because they have like little cages of pigeons I think if they pull a string and it opens and the pigeon flies out and gets shot um, so yeah just from a um, from a historical perspective in general if you if you look at this like this is this thing from 1887 uh, oh no there's all the, here's all the, the the years from 1873 yeah, 72 through to 1910 all the people who won this big um, Grand Prix du Casino um, you know, and you go down Sir William such and such, Captain Aubrey Patton and Count Michael Estahazy, Le Count de Caspella, Count Salina, Count Gajoli, Count this, Signor that, and Monsieur. Um, yeah, so it was a very, uh, really an upper class sort of thing. Uh, and then they talk about going to single triggers. There was another big kind of thing about that time. And then mis miscellaneous different sorts of guns. Uh, now, Green of course made these. Um, I've actually seen these. Uh, they, well, they made alarm guns, but they also made these um, uh, humane cattle killers. Um, they, they were used in ab abattoirs. I think they don't think they use them now, but they were used in abattoirs throughout the world they have like a pistol cartridge in them and they just put on the head of the, the cow and I think they were whacked with a hammer and fired the cartridge into the 
into the cow. Uh, line, a line thrower guns. Greener, of course, also made um, whaling guns as well. I don't know that they're in here. But Greener actually made whaling guns for shooting whales. Uh, anyway, so then we got the modern pistol. So you know, like the dual Colt revolver. So we've got you know self-ejecting uh, revolvers. Um, you know, it's like a Colt Model 1883 or something like that on there. I think. Um, then we've got the Borchardt, which is the pregenitus of the Luger. We've got the Smith & Wesson um, break open ones, Wesley Fosbury's, um, RIC, which is like an Adams, I think it's an Adams patent, that one. Um, we've got the early so this is before the 1911 so this is the cult model of 1902 i think it is which was the which was in 380 auto which was the you know the kind of ancestor to the model of 1911 you can sort of see the general layout is the same but at that time that was the modern modern gun um, and then they talk about explosives and powder in general because uh, of course remembering that this is a, this is just like up the the dawn of smokeless powder you know while he was writing this book um, so um, there's a bit about the whole chemistry and the, and the um... uh, next he talks about uh, ballistics uh, internal ballistics uh, of an explosion um, and then cartridges and ammunition accessories, manufacture of the cartridge, types of cartridges. Um, about shots and shot sizes. Oh, then accessories. Then they go to rifles, history of rifling. Going back to old rifles. Um, types of projectile, Whitworth rifle. Modern sporting rifles. Hunting. types of bullets, rifle bullets, um, types of uh, rifle action, then external ballistics, so what we understand is ballistics. So um, it talks about ballistics, a whole heap of cartridges at the time. Um, then when they talk about the military rifles of that era, so single shot military rifles. So we've got the Snyder, Martini Henry, we got the Dreiser needle gun, the French Chaspeau, Braidland Albini Mauser, 1871 Mauser, Roberts breech loader, the Burdan, which was sold to the Russians, the Verndal, the Peabody, which is the American precursor of the Martini, Sharps, Remington rolling block, Wesley Richards field, some of these aren't quite so well known. There's the Spencer, oh, so then we've got early repeating rifles. We've got the Spencer, we've got the 1894 Winchester, 1873 Winchester, Cold Lightning Confection, and then we've got the Marlins. 18, whatever that one is, I'm not so familiar with the Marlins. They had an 18, 8, 92 or 4, didn't they? Um, need a magazine gun. Then we got modern military rifles. So we got the Vesely, Swiss Vesely. So there's an 1888 Mauser Commission rifle, the LaBelle. So we've got the 95 Manlicker, there's the Dutch Hembrug, the Lee Speed, so the further the first of the uh, Lee pattern rifles, Manlicker, so that's a 95 Austrian Manlicker I think, straight pull, um, number one Mark III. 
Bertie Marga, never heard of that one. Um, and we've got a few semi autos, the Manlika automatic rifle. Uh, and then there's a bit of stuff about target rifles, of course, green and made target rifles, especially small ball, Martin target rifles. Um, so they're talking about, yeah, uh, there's some history of target shooting. There's a cadet and early cadet rifles. Is that something that I, well, I know about the uh, Australian military ones. I've got several of those, but that's, this is they were the original pattern that they were made from. Um, bit about sort of small bore target rifle cartridges, sights. And uh, yeah, then we've got comprehensive index. And we'll just have a quick look at all these ads, they're pretty interesting. Burberry's weatherproof kit, of course, Burberry still make that sort of thing. Schultz gunpowder, so that was sort of just one of the first um, smokeless, available smokeless powders for sporting use. I think it's Schultz was a German powder, but obviously sold in the UK. EC3 smokeless powder. No blowback, no smoke. And we've got Ely cartridges, we've got Nobel's sporting powder. Curtis and Harvey, they were a big English maker of um, smokeless powder. Uh, various pads, books, the Maxim silencer, of course, Maxim machine gun guy, he invented all sorts of other stuff. Cartridges, so we've got Greener's cartridges for shotguns. So this is Greener's hammerless ejector. Um, got greener hammer guns, single barrel guns, duck guns, revolvers. See, they made revolvers, bulldogs, target pistols, cape rifles, ball and shotguns. So they get into these big, big, heavy guns for shooting tigers in India and stuff. And we got big game rifles. And we got falling block. These are Farquhar's and Farquhar, I think they're called actions, aren't they? These falling block English ones. We've got a build on a Lee action. And we've got Lee military rifles. Now I'm not sure if Greener River made number one Mark threes or whether he's just selling selling these with the Greener name on them and they're made by you know BSA or whatever. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, Rook rifles. We've got the club rifles. And there's the 310. So that's the sort of basically the Martini Cadet before it was actually sold as a military trainer. 310 Cadet. There's the green humane cattle killer I was talking about before. Well, these are all the all the things that the greener guns have won in various trials. There's some more books by Greener. There's one called Breach Loader and How to Use It. Sharpshooting for Sport and War. The British military uh, miniature rifle. And there's some reviews of the Greener factory in Birmingham. So there you go. So yes. So the gun and its development by W. W. Greener. So this is the ninth edition. Um, I think this is the last edition that's sort of still available now. Uh, so you can buy it new. Uh, I'm not sure how much it is new, but there's always plenty of them on eBay. Um, here, both here, you see them both here in Australia and overseas. Um, if you're uh, if you're in another country, you can get them on Amazon as well. Probably, uh, we can't get Amazon here in Australia anymore. Um, we're not from overseas anyway. Um, but uh, that's about it. Um, if you like this sort of thing, please uh, subscribe to my channel uh, and press the like button. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching.